Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilbert again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to invite you to subscribe to the channel because that's really going to help me in improving this amazing community. And today I'm going to be giving you a couple of tips for VS Code. I've been using VS Code quite a bit for all the development that I'm doing in games. And I want to show you how the debugger works. I showed you that previously, but there's some additional functionalities such as the watch, such as the debugger console, some commands that you can run, how we can do a breakpoint in not only a breakpoint, but also at a conditional breakpoint. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so I want to show you some additional features that are available in VS Code whenever you're debugging, especially with Unity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up VS Code by clicking on Open C Sharp Project. And the scene that I have right now is a scene that I created for a Unity procedural generation project, and it's, it's fairly basic. So let me just bring it down here and, and start looking at some of the things that we're going to look at. So whenever you're debugging, and I show you this in a previous video where I go through VS Code, if you haven't downloaded the components needed to debug Unity, make sure that you do that by going into extensions. And if I look at extensions, you'll see that I have extensions for almost everything that I that I develop on. But I have one for Unity code snippets that I use that I use quite a bit. But to stay on track with the video that we're that we're going through right now, this is the one that you're gonna need. And this one is called the debugger for Unity. It's developed by Unity Technology. So make sure that you get it installed. Once you install it, all you really need to do is basically go under debug and then once you, you click this little bug icon you'll see that you have different options in here click on the gear to open the debugger options and if you develop for multiple you know multiple technologies like i'm doing things for unity for node for docker make sure that you select the one that it's for unity so you're going to click on unity debugger it's basically going to create and create a launch.json file. We don't need to do anything on that JSON file. Just go ahead and close it. And, and now you're going to see Unity Editor here. So if you want to attach it to the Unity Editor, all you got to do is just click on Play. And if everything works successfully, you're going to see this on the Debug Console. You're going to see that it's initializing. You're going to see that it's searching for Unity Process, Unity Editor. And then once it finds the PID, the, the process ID, it's going to display the process ID. And it's going to basically say that it attached the debugger. So now we're good to go. So some things that I want to show you, and I show you some of them in, in some of the videos, is how you can add breakpoints, how we can add conditional breakpoints. So a couple of things that we can do is we can go in here and add a breakpoint. You can also, as soon as you click on that breakpoint, you're going to see the breakpoint shows in here. If for whatever reason I had to say that I have multiple breakpoints selected and I want to, right now I want to debug it and see how, how it runs. So I go back into Unity, I hit play, and I know that that script is going to execute. So you can kind of see that it hit that breakpoint. The other cool thing about here is I can hover over each one of the variables that are in context. I can look at the width, I can look at the height. I could, you know, if I wanted to test this with a different width, let's say that I didn't want to have 10, I wanted to have 100, but I didn't want to run the game again. I can set it in here to 100 by 100. And basically, it's basically going to have that. So when it's setting things, so as long as you are prior to executing that line of code, you're going to be okay because that variable hasn't been set. So at this point, I know that vertices, you know, vertices one, the value of x is going to be 100. So if we go in here, we can look at, OK, yeah, vertices at index 1 has a value of 100 at x. And so that value that I overwrote by typing that into the block variables was taken. The other cool thing that I can do in here that I that I show some people is you can basically type in vertices. And I can also look at the vertices values in here. So I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see it. And I can also expand it in here, which is really powerful. Not only have access to the data through the variables, but I also have the have access to the data through the debug console. So I could also say, okay, vertices at one. You know, I wanted to get the value of that, and I wanted to see what the value of x was. So that tells me that the value of x is you know is zero is is one hundred. I can do the, the same thing with y, and I can do the same thing with z. 
I can also just look at the whole thing and look at all the, you know, all three different values. I can also say, okay, you know what? I want to see everything that is in, in the vertices. So I can see the whole array and you can see the whole array by doing that. And you have access to, you know, magnitude, normalize, and also the square magnitude. So you have access to pretty much everything. The other thing that I can do here is I can, you know, step into just like any, you know, any any IDE, I can step over, I can step into, if that was a method, I can step out, I can restart if I wanted to. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna step over, and you know, I hit that other breakpoint. I can hit play to go to the next one. And because this is getting, up, this is getting called on every frame, so that's why we're getting these breakpoints all the time. But you may not want to see that every time. You may want to just add a conditional. So one thing that we can do here, we can also add a conditional for some of these elements. So we can say, you know, I only want to stop at this point when this is set to zero. So I could say, I could remove this breakpoint. And instead of doing that breakpoint, I can just add a conditional breakpoint. And to add a conditional breakpoint, all you got to do is just basically type in this has to evaluate to true. So in this case, I'm gonna say, okay, this is equal equal to zero. I hit enter, it's gonna add a conditional breakpoint. So what I can do is I can, now I remove the one that is above and I can hit play. And you can see that it's going to, it's always going to stop there because that condition is set to zero to start with. If you wanted to look for a specific value, maybe you said random number and maybe the value of the random number is three or higher than three then you want to look for numbers that are greater than or equal to three. You can do that as well. So conditionals are really cool because back in the day, I used to have to add, you know, debug entries and, and even if statements and put a breakpoint inside of the if statement. You don't need to do that anymore. You can just add a conditional breakpoint and that basically will do what you need. And, and you know, in cases when that evaluates to true, that's when you want to break. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the breakpoint. And so I show you how that works in here. The other thing that I that I want to show you is some of the quick commands that you can do in the debug console, just like you do on every terminal. And you might be familiar with, like if you go to a regular terminal and I type in up, up is going to take me to the history of the commands that I executed. So that's one thing that is really powerful about VS Code. They adapted a lot of that functionality. So what I can do in here, let's say that I type in game object, right? That's going to give me a game object. I want to type in, you know, I want to get the name or I want to get the transform object, or I want to get a transform pairing object. And in this case, it's null because I don't have this one associated with every, anything. So what's cool about this, I'm going to hit enter, enter, enter. I can do up, and I can go back in the history. I want to, OK, I want to get that. I want to get that. I want to get the, maybe I want to get the y value. And then I want to multiply that by the z value. You can do that as well. You can do expressions in here, and I can say, you know what, if, if, x is, if x is greater than zero, I want to see what the, the condition, you know, evaluates for that, for that expression. If I want to say, you know, is this greater than 10? It's going to be false because I know that it's 10. So if I want to say equal, equal 10, you can. So you basically can test a lot of your code in the debug console. You have, like I said, the variables available for you. The, the other thing that is really cool is you can get watches, and I haven't shown you this on, on any of my videos yet, but let's say that I wanted to watch the value of, you know, at, at index one, I wanna get the value of X, I wanna also get the value of Y, and maybe I wanna get, I wanna know what the value of three is for whatever reason, or maybe I wanna know what the value of, so if I add a new one, let's say that I wanna know, oops, See if I can add it. Maybe I, okay, there we go. I need to type in. So maybe I want to know what the value of x times 2 is uh, at that index. So that gets me 20. So so it's cool because, you know, I can I can keep evaluating things. And if I put a breakpoint, and at that time of that breakpoint, I know that all these values are 0. They don't have, I don't have to have to go to, you know, type it in here or have to hover over it to find out what it is. You can add all the different watches that you need to evaluate basically to give you the results that you're looking for. The, the, other th the other thing that is really cool about about this is you can also look at the call stack. So I know that generate, you know, generate quad, it's basically the higher thing in the, in the stack. 
and I know that the update is basically the, the thing that was on the bottom. So I know that this method was called and then it called the generic generic quad. In this case, this is not as helpful because we're only dealing with two methods. But if you start getting very deep into your, you know, what what's called, uh, I believe it's called cyclo, uh, I can't remember the term, but it's something about complexity. Let me, let me look it up just so that I know. I think it's called cyclomatic. Oh, there we go. It is called cyclomatic complexity. So if you start getting a lot of cyclomatic complexity, which means that you're going very deep in your calls, then you can look at your call stacking here. I can also double click it. It'll take me to that line. I can double click it to take me to the other line. And so this is really, really helpful when it comes to, you know, trying to debug your code and find issues. The other thing that you have here that is really helpful, you can look at problems. You can look at the output of the bill. You can look at the debug console, of course, that I just show you. And the other thing that is powerful about VS Code is you also have access to a terminal. So just like the terminal that I show you here, you can also do it here. I could look at, you know, for instance, if you were writing to a log or to a JSON file, you can look in here. You have Veeam available. So you basically have everything in your fingerprints without having to leave the the IDE. So that's basically what I what I wanted to provide you as far as tips. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I think on the next video, I'm going to go through source control with VS Code and show you some of the capabilities that are built into VS Code as well as some of the plugins that I'm using. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net. They have amazing resources for game developers. If you're starting out or if you're an advanced game developer, they have resources for you. Also, find me in Patreon where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes. I'm also posting early access to source code and videos in advance. So make sure you check me out. And thank you very much, guys.